Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and in this video I wanted to talk a little bit about Journey to Angoro. I'm sure you've already heard the next Hearthstone expansion announced earlier today, coming out in April. And I want to focus in on the new <clears throat> Priest Legendary spell. It's a quest card called Awaken the Makers, and uh, when you complete the quest by summoning seven Death Rattle minions, you get rewarded with Amara Warden of Hope. So, People have been voting this card up as super OP, meta-defining, game-breaking, and I don't think the card's quite that powerful, so I'd like to kind of make my case really quickly, because I, I think that's probably the most interesting thing that's been announced so far. Uh, the other cards, they're okay-ish, but let's focus on this for now. So, Awaken the Makers as a quest. It pops into your hand on turn one, and I'm pretty sure it's included as one of the cards. It's not like an extra free card but something that you always have in your mulligan. And the quest, you spend one mana to play it, so presumably as a priest, you probably do that as a turn one play, because there's no turn one minions you really want to play, usually. What's the Shadow Cleric, maybe? Um, and then over the course of the game, you got to play seven Death Battle minion, which I would point out is easier said than done, unless you're playing a long, drawn-out control matchup. And then at the end of it, you get rewarded with a five mana 8-8, uh, Amara Warden of Hope, that is kind of like a super mean taxing because it gives you 40 health, and it puts you outside of combo range, and I think that's the most useful uh, component of it. So, here's the thing. If you're going up against an aggressive deck where you would really want the hero's health to get restored to full, and then that would basically be an auto win, uh, you have to do that. I mean, in order to do that, you have to summon 7 Death Rattle minions. Aggro decks... Don't let you summon seven minions in the game, let alone seven death rattle minions. So let's just say you're playing a full death rattle deck and you're playing on curve. So turn two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight are going to be played um, playing a death rattle minion. And then on turn nine, you get two Amara Warden of Hope to 40 health and you win the game, right? So death rattle minions currently. Um, for Priest, I mean, you have Shifting Shade, but it has really weak stats, and it would be really easy to just get knocked off the board. Um, a Lightning Bolt, for instance, and yeah, this is talking current meta stuff, and Aggro Shaman might not be a thing going forward, but whatever the new deck that goes to replace it is. Um, and then you have some weak neutral minions. Uh, it, Sylvanas won't even be playable for this, I, we should point out. Um, but like the 4 mana 2 3 taunt that Death Rattles into a 2 2, it's like a kind of bad Sinjin Shield Master. Uh, you have Cam Bloodhoof, which is a solid card, but it's kind of slow, and any moderately aggressive deck's just going to ignore it. And you have, uh, let's see, the the guy that gets you a Death Rattle minion adds it to your hand, but that's a 2 mana 1 2, and that's not a Death Rattle minion in itself, so you have to actually play another minion on top of that. In order for it to spawn. So that might mean you're like going till turn 9 in order to get Amara. Um, but generally the point is um, with these death rattle strategies of like, whoa, you're going to bring everything back with Nizoth, ultimate value, uh, you're already kind of dead. And the battle cry to set your hero's health to 40 doesn't matter because you're already dead. Um, a 5 mana 8 8 taunt, yeah, it, it, it's pretty solid for its stats. But the other two types of decks you're going to go up against are combo and control. So combo decks, they're already trying to remove those by basically knocking power overwhelming off the board, so combo Vino Lock presumably won't really be a thing going forward. And let's see, what what other combo decks are they out there? Like Kuhn Cthune. Th I think this might be pretty good against Kuhn Cthune because you can't just get basically obliterated by Maligos unless he's going to hold on to even more spells and get a really good Emperor Thar Sanchon. Um but yeah, in theory, against a combo deck that takes to like turn 10 to 15 to get its combo ready and then kill you, it's going to be pretty good. Like, uh, against anything can happen, probably pretty good. Uh, and then you have control decks. So, priests love to play control. Or at least I love to play control versus control when I play. So you get this guy in your hand after a very long game. So turn 10 plus, And you have a 5 mana 8-8. Eight, eight, and you get to heal to 40. But the thing is, control versus control, the health isn't nearly as relevant because your opponent and you are just trying to run each other out of resources and see who's last, uh, who, who's the last one standing. Because generally, 
for all the turns when you're playing that slow, both players have the enough removal spell to go pretty close to fatigue. So instead of focusing on damaging your health, they're going to be killing your minions, especially when they already know you're playing Awaken the Makers and they don't think they can kill you before churn Amara. So basically, uh, you get Amara into your hand after this long control uh, value game, and then you Amara, and you basically go from 30 health to 40 health. But you run into the same problem that Control Warrior has, where against anything that's not an aggressive deck, the health is not really so relevant. Like, yes, you won't die, but you're also not going to win the game, because your opponent's just trying to outvalue you, and he doesn't care about your 40 health. So at the end of the day, um, you basically kind of pseudo wasted your turn one in order to get a 5 mana 8-8 eight, eight taunt. Which, if you put it that way, sounds pretty underwhelming to me. So, this quest particularly uh, seems really bad against aggro, and mediocre against control, but good against combo decks. But combo decks are already being kind of shot in the foot. Um, at least the classic kill you in one turn combo decks. So other combo decks, like, I don't know, an Evolve Shaman, um, they're just trying to kind of pressure you out with a huge board, and if you can't remove that board over one or two turns, it doesn't matter how much health you have, because it's going to be like 30 damage to your face each turn. So, like, ultimately, yeah, it's a powerful effect, but it's too slow for aggro where it would be best against, and it's not that insane against control, which is going to be most of your other matchups. So, uh, Amara, Warden of Hope, and Awaken the Makers. Is it good? It might be pretty decent. Is it playable? Yeah, you could totally put it in a, a, in a Zoth deck and play some kind of new Death Rattle Priest going forward. Is it going to be meta-defining and the card to beat? And, oh my god, Priest is so OP. Like, Shamans have a 4-mana 7-7, seven, seven, but Priests have a 5-mana 8-8. Eight, eight. It's also a Reno Jackson. No, it, it's nowhere near that OP. In fact, I would just say that you know Jackson's probably straight up better. Um, if you've been paying any attention to the current meta, you know that any control deck that's basically one of those three classes absolutely has to play Reno Jackson. Uh, that's uh, Priest, Warlock, and Mage. Uh, because Reno Jackson is how you win against aggro, but this doesn't win games against aggro because you're already dead. So that was kind of a long rant. Um, I guess I'll give some really quick opinions on these three cards, too. Um, that's, I guess that's kind of part of what I do on this channel. The Adapt effect, I think, is going to be interesting. You can see you get to choose uh, three from ten effects. What's interesting about it is I, I think it adds a little bit more skill to the game because anyone can net deck a deck, but can you always make the right choice in a Discover effect? Because it's kind of like drafting Arena, which I do a lot, and... Uh, I'm probably better at Arena because I refuse to play meta decks in Constructed. But uh, when you have to choose one of three choices on the fly, given this very specific situation, it, it forces you to have to think. And you can't just cheese through that situation by net decking. You actually have to recognize the situation and make the best call. So I think that this adapt mechanic, regardless of which cards it gets added onto, is going to add a little bit more skill to the game. And I do really like that. Um, Pyros, I think, is being underrated. It's kind of like having three minions for the price of one in the case of a very long control game. Um, aside from that, it helps you fill your mana curve. So you're, you're playing a control mage. You wouldn't normally put a crappy two drop in, but a crappy two drop that helps fill your mana curve on turns two, six, and ten, or uh, some offshoot of that, like seven, turn seven, six mana, six, six, and a spell. Probably actually not bad. Um, and Volcano, obviously this is a, a Control Shaman blow up the board card. I, I don't think it's bad. Um, like Control Shaman was kind of playing Elemental Destruction before, which blows up your board. This is similar. Uh, has a little bit of difference there. Like you can play this with Acolyte of Pain and almost guaranteed draw three cards. That's not bad. So like eight mana, blow up the board, uh, draw three cards. That seems decent to me. But um, will be OP? Is it as good as Flame Strike? Probably not. It's just solid for control decks and absolutely trash for any aggressive or mid range deck because those are all about building the board and shaman. So uh, yeah, the card reveals are going to start in March seventeenth. Of course, I'll be doing more of them on my channel. 
I uh, hope you're not too salty about my analysis of Amara. Maybe I'm completely wrong. We'll have to see going forward. Uh, I do really like the concept of quests, though, because it kind of adds, in a way, like a new soft win condition to the game. Um, kind of hoping that the other ones are a little bit more playable, maybe. Well, I, I don't know. I could be completely wrong. This is just, given what I've seen so far, I don't think Amara is super amazing. I think it's playable. And I've been Dark Skeleton, so I won't waste any more of your time. I'll see you guys later. And uh, yeah, we'll be doing the card reveals and reviews of those cards as soon as they start coming out in half a month or so. So till then, guys.